It's mailbag time with non copyrighted music. Okay, here we go, here we go. And we've got a package within a package. And we've got giant capacitors. Oh, yes. Okay. Giant capacitors. Oh, I think, well, they're quite light. Let's zoom in and have a look at them. 50 farad, three volts. 50 farad, what? So maybe this was, um, yeah, I think this might be a little bit about replacing some batteries around the place. If I've got very low energy requirement circuits, then perhaps I don't need batteries at all, but uh, maybe I can charge up the capacitor instead and see what the discharge times are like for that. Let's get in a circuit and see if uh, we can get proof of concept at least. So I've got the so-called super cap hooked up here and it's showing 0 0.003 volts uh, and I'm going to pump through 3.3 volts, it's rated to 3 and I've got half an amp coming in so let's switch that on and see what happens. So you can see the voltage rising, uh, indeed the uh, current limiter is coming in at uh, half an amp and the little indicator light at this stage uh, is not showing anything uh, because that voltage is too low and everything's going to the super cap. So yeah, the theory is for me anyway that uh, during the day on solar, uh, this will act as a battery and uh, hold the charge and uh, and then at night time will discharge. And uh, so that's the um, that's the plan. So we uh, we might see how long this takes and uh, and come back and see if it'll discharge okay. It's topped out at about 2.7 volts. Uh, no more current flowing through. So uh, I'm going to unplug and see if uh, we can get some. Well, you can see that the light's on. Actually, if I just turn this off. Yeah, you can clearly see the LED shining there. So what I'm going to do is just unplug and watch the voltage. So yeah, that's all coming now from the capacitor. I reckon that's pretty good, 2.7 volts. Hmm. Well, considering that the little nickel metal hydride batteries that I am uh, charging with the QX5252 is around 1.2, 1.3 volts, that should be okay. Although there's a little issue with getting a charge in there in the first place. So still some experimentation on that front. But um, yeah, a little light shining, that's a good thing. And uh, the super capacitors seem to be what they were advertised as. So yeah, good result. I love the smell of burning parcels in the morning. Let's see what is inside the burnt external portion of this. Ooh, interesting. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on that and have a look. Yeah, so we have the LM339 quad comparator. There's 20 of them in this shipment. And I didn't have any uh, quad or I didn't have any comparators in the uh, quad configuration. Had some LM319s, I think they are, which is the dual comparator. But uh, yeah, this is the quad version. And now the I guess the challenge is to find uh, a project in which I can use them. Oh, might need to zoom out a bit for this one. Let's see how we go. What is in here? Aha! I know exactly what's in here. So a long, long time ago, I did a video about converting an oven to make it be able to do some reflow work for me. And uh, one of the things which, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a reasonably good project and it worked fine for making the Paduk programmer. But um, 
The actual um, probes themselves that I used at the time were not very robust, and uh, I was just looking for a more robust version. I'll link the, the uh, project up here so you can have a look at the original, but I just needed something which maybe in the end I could put through to the inside of the oven, and I wasn't sure when I ordered these about what length would be uh, useful, so I ordered a couple of different lengths. But that's what these are. They are temperature probes to uh, connect up to, um, I think I used a, in the end an at mega 328 um, processor and um, or microcontroller. And what I was trying to do was, in this case, not so much um, affect the temperature of the oven, but to just monitor it so I could do some reflow. Uh, ultimately, of course, and there's many projects like this on the web, if you look for them, uh, you have some sort of PID feedback loop and you're able to you know exactly have that sort of temperature profile that you need for reflow me i was just <laughs> turning on and off the oven and monitoring it via uh, probes like this hooked up to a microcontroller so yes that's what these guys are about the continuation of a reflow oven very light very light and very well packed very well packed, very light, and a camera. Mm -hmm. Another camera. <laughs> is, that, is that enough? I don't know. So, yes, just looking at different options for cameras hooked up to. Oh, that's a nice, that looks like, let's zoom in on that one. Yeah, that looks like a nice focus. Looks like a nice uh, length of barrel, I would probably say, because I am doing a lot of wide angle stuff. Uh, and so I am looking for, uh, you know, those, those, uh, oh, it's interesting, those lenses, which are able to give me the uh, the wider angle. So the longer barrel ones, and then of course the, uh, the cables here to hook up to raspberry pies, uh, orange pies, and so forth. Yeah, more cameras, great. Reasonably heavy, this guy. And inside, oh, who's going roller skating soon? Well, skateboarding, really, isn't it? But uh, yes, ultimately, I'm looking to maybe uh, create some, I don't know, alternative energy sources, I'm guessing. And I'd love to make my own um, wind generator, I suppose. And for that, you need bearings and these are different types of bearings so very very long-term project that one but always useful to have some bearings around the place for when you're connecting up some rotating things to motors etc or vice versa oh good a box my favorite well oh. okay Ah, okay, yes. So, um, <laughs> life imitating art or art imitating life. So, CCTV cameras, which are fake, so this is definitely a fake one, but we'll have inside it perhaps a real camera eventually. So, the real cameras themselves, the real CCTV cameras and systems are quite expensive, but this is sort of like a weatherproof box that I can take the guts out of and then put in the um, the cameras that I've got in mind. So let's look at what's inside. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, the sticker is probably the best deterrent, you know, for a dollar or so that you can buy for your place. But in the background, having a camera is pretty good as well. And um, let's see what is actually inside of this. That's clearly just fake tubing, but yeah, we might be able to get to it and see what's inside. And uh, years ago, actually, probably about a good five years ago, I took one of these and put my own electronics inside. We should probably have a look at that. And uh, what that does is that it, it uh, instead of, because the, the fake ones, they sort of blink, you know, a little bit, well, very regularly. And uh, what I wanted was something that blinked as if it was responding to the... Um, you know, to the presence of someone. And so let me just see if I can lever that out. 
Hmm. Let me get back to you on that. Okay, yes, yeah, so this does come out, and then there's a battery holder in here. Looks like triple A's. Let's have a look. Yep, triple A's. Do I have any triple A's? Um, yes, I do. Oops. Let's put that back. All right, so triple A's, and let's plug in. I don't know if there's a switch or not. I think it's just battery on, and we're good to go. Yep. Yes, so a very unconvincing red flashing light, which I don't think would fool anyone. Let me show you the one that I have uh, put together. And um, yeah, this is a different project. Like this one, I'm actually gonna take all of this out and put an actual camera in, but I did do one like this where I just put in, I think I put in another LED and I just made it, made sure that it was doing it sort of fairly randomly. Let's go and have a look at that one. Wow, yes, okay, so uh, this is the old project. Uh, look at how dirty that is. I mean, that's gonna need some cleaning as well, so it's probably not a bad idea to, uh, oh, that's quite rusted in too. That screwdriver's not gonna work. Let's go with the old multi-tool, very handy. And, uh, oh, that's well rusted in, that is. That might actually have to, oh yeah, look at that. That is shocking. I might have to drill that guy out. He's been up there way too long. All right, so loosened up now. Ugh. Okay. So yeah, similar system. There we go. And I'm definitely gonna be cleaning that glass up. And then we've got inside here, We've got my version, which has got, okay. I haven't touched this for literally five years since I've seen this. That looks like, let's get in a bit closer. That looks like an A-Tiny 85 here. And then I've got, so I've drilled out the original LEDs and I've put in a red and I've put in a green here. And then three, double A's, which should, let me replace those, do I have any of those around the place? Um, no, let me get back to you on that one. Okay, three new double A's. This will be interesting to see if it's seeing fires after all this time. It's been sitting out in the weather for years. There we go, and on this side, and on that side. Oh, hallelujah, we've got some randomness. Let's turn these lights off. And uh, yeah, so the idea is that the, I think the red indicates that it is responding to uh, you know, like movement, and then the green I think is supposed to indicate that it is maybe contacting the uh, you know the server or whatever for upload or vice versa. So it's completely random, but it is amazing, you know, particularly at night time when you go out and have a look, that it does seem to be responding to your presence. So that's a very simple hack. I'll just turn the lights back on again, watch your eyes. Here we go. Uh, a very simple hack of a cheap CCTV camera, and uh, maybe I'll, if anyone's interested, I'll post that as a separate uh, blog and video, I guess, with the code on there, um, so that you can have the appearance of a CCTV camera. And then you can actually hide a CCTV camera somewhere if you like. Uh, and this one can be the, uh, you know, the fake one. Anyway, it's a bit of a game, isn't it? But um, a bit of fun as well. I'll clean this up and put it back together. Well, I've been, you know, trying various solvents and so forth. I think ultimately, though, this is just sun damaged. So I'm probably looking to replace it. And I have come across these plastic ones. They're, the only thing I worry about is this sort of bit in the middle, which sort of gives it away that it's not real. But then the middle of this is also sort of, yeah, I don't know whether that will actually work or not. Yeah, that is, that is pretty damaged. Isn't it? I'll try and find some plastic though. Oh, I know what I can use. 
Uh, yeah, these trays that, you know, you get uh, all sorts of various things in these days. The question is, I have one that's the right. It is, look at that, it's near perfect. I'll cut a guy out here. And uh, this is pretty thick, durable plastic. Uh, how it'll go in the sun, I don't know, but I think it'll be a nice replacement for uh, for this one, which I, yeah, too damaged uh, by the sun. Hmm, might work. All right, so I think I might get maybe an elastic band around here as well before it goes back in. But uh, this is the fake lens now, or lens cover. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, you know, I might trim it a bit, actually. Um, it's got some pokey up bits around here. I'll just get rid of those. But it seems to be, yeah, you can just sort of see it poking up. Just try and slide around there. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And then... Um, that's going to sit over the top. I'll put it back together. I'll go and get that elastic band to keep these secure and we'll put it back together and see how it looks. Yeah, a completely real fake in the end. So I've jammed it back in there and uh, it's probably good to go for another... It, I've found that it probably goes for about another six months because actually what's happening is that the A2085 is in full-on sleep mode. Uh, wakes up, does something random, and then uh, and goes back to sleep again. So it's actually pretty energy efficient. So I'll uh, stick that back on the outside with the uh, with a sticker, warning all the miscreants that there's a fake camera about. And uh, yeah, uh, and with the new project, uh, with the one that's just arrived, uh, I'd like to probably put an actual camera in there. So yeah, interesting. That is the mailbag for the week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.